John here guys and today we're talking about the iFlight ProTech 35. This is not the amateur tech, this is the ProTech. This is the latest, can you even call it a Cinewhoop with all of the original design features that iFlight has included? They're really stepping up the game. Now what is a Cinewhoop? A Cinewhoop is essentially a ducted or guarded drone that is meant to be able to carry a full size GoPro camera. In this case, the Hero 9 is what I use for the footage that you're going to see. And does this make enough original component selections that really differs from the standard design philosophy? And do those inclusions make it a better experience? Now, the ways that they differ from the traditional Cinewhoop formula is that they are using guards, not ducks. Um, it is a plastic guard design. They've increased the size of the motor. Traditional Cinewhoop motor size is about a 1507. This is a much, much wider 2203.5. 3600 kV option. This is the 4S option. The other thing they've done is increase the overall footprint, increase the size. This is running three and a half inch props. Now, if we compare to a more traditional size Cinewhoop that is three inch, you can see just how much larger that is side by side. The extra disc area of this additional size prop at three and a half inch versus the traditional three inch really gives you a lot more speed and control throughout the mid to high speed ranges. Um, it really gives you control throughout. This is one of the most exciting releases and I've been waiting to get my hands on it um, because I really thought that increasing the motor size and prop size from a traditional Cinewhoop would really hit the trick. Now, the reason why I'm comparing it to the FPV Cycle Cinesplore is because this is actually pretty lightweight and it also has a very large motor, 2203. So are there some advantages to this formula? And I'd have to say, yes, this is really robust. The design feels like you could just bang into almost anything and it wouldn't even flinch. Um, the duct design on here is pretty protective, but I have these printed out of PETG. They're not going to withstand everything, right? This feels like you could bang it into a car and it wouldn't budge. You might hurt the car because this thing is a bit heavy. Um, dry as it sits without the camera and battery, it's 360 grams. So that makes it almost 100 grams more than that Cinesplore. The Squirt V2 that we recently had was about 318 grams. But you get something for that. It has the iFlight stack inside that is quite good. You can see the design and look at the little features that are on the, all of the little printed landing gear that is gonna keep everything looking safe and new. The really nice antenna holder in the back that keeps your antennas up and away from the craft so that you'll have good reception. You can see from the dual antennas here that this is using the full-size DJI Air unit. It has some integrated LEDs in the back which are really nice for being able to follow this thing as it flies around the sky. Now you're not really ever going to not know where this thing is because one of the things that you do get by increasing the motor and prop size is this thing is loud. Now, all Cinewhoops are quite loud, but this thing is louder. I mean, it was significantly louder than a five inch, than any other craft aside from maybe a beast class giant quad. Um, even people as I flew next to them at the night spot were commenting that it was so loud they couldn't even hold a conversation as I flew by. It was that loud. What do you think of this Cinewhoop? It's kind of loud. It's really loud, it, and it, it sounds like it's really struggling in the air. Is it, is it, lo is it louder than a five inch? Well, not when like when I, when I fly five inch calmly, hovering, it, like it's definitely much more quiet than your quad. Yeah, you know, like I, yeah. if I full throttle freedom spec, it will be much full throttle freedom spec. Oh, yeah. It will be much more quiet than your quad hovering. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because I could hear it way over there, yeah. and no, I was just going slow. When you went, when you went right next to us, we couldn't talk because we cannot hear each other. Yeah. That was true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. You that know, it's so true. loud. 
we had to quiet down because it's right. lower. Let's go in and then we'll be. While I really, really like the extra control of this thing, the extra noise is a little bit annoying. Then again though, any Cinehoop is gonna be loud, so it's not like you're gonna wanna fly any of the other varieties close to anybody without them noticing, like people are gonna hear this. This one though, um, I felt like even people across the street, if I was doing a test cover, were really gonna notice it. I mean, it's just like almost a factor of twice as loud as your regular Cinewoop, almost twice as loud as a five inch, but that's really not the biggest deal. They've done such a great job with this frame. Another, another nice little inclusion is you can very easily access your USB port on the bottom. A lot of these Cinewoops make it impossible to access your USB ports so that it's very hard to change anything with tuning and that's something that you really need for this class of craft because um, unlike some of your average freestyle quads having this as smooth as possible really is an important feature this is the 4s version and the top plate is quite large that means that you can easily fit a full-size 4s pattery on i flew it with a 1300 4s pack and i got about three and a half minutes of you know cruising cinematic flight if you wanted a little bit of extra flight time you could run a 1550 it would handle it just fine with the amount of power i don't know if this would be what i would select to fly indoors because it is larger it is heavier it is louder um the control that you get with this thing is really once you get above 10 to 15 to 20 miles an hour when you're going like walking speeds the control isn't um, as a parent. Now it is still quite good compared to like your traditional Cinewoop a few years ago. But uh, after flying all these recently, the very, very low speeds, it doesn't have the max control. But what's interesting is this is the iFly C85 I did the other day, the two inch. This does have that super fine control at very, very low speeds. The amount of control this thing had was like on par with an Emacs Tiny Hawk indoors. It was so controllable. So are Cinewoops really more like pieces of glass? Are they like lenses that you would keep in your camera bag? Is this your wide angle lids that you would keep for going in small spaces? And is this your telephoto that you would keep for going and covering ground in a quick space? If I was gonna fly and follow somebody that was on a bike, a skateboard, a car even, this is probably what I would choose because it has the maximum amount of speed. You can load up the battery as big or as small as you want to get the appropriate flight time. It is not even gonna be phased by the heavy weight of a full-size GoPro. That was the only downside was there are not a ton of prop options with this essentially new size, but they are hitting. There is the Octoblade available for this now. I think for a lot of people, if you don't want to build your own, if you want to get up in the air, if you want to have something that you don't ever really need to fly indoors, and make no mistake guys, if I was going to fly something indoors, I might just walk around with the camera I'm shooting on now, full size, full frame camera on a gimbal walking. Um, what's the purpose of flying this down a hallway when you can just walk with a better camera than a GoPro? So for outdoors, this might be, I mean, the king. Now, large motors, large props. The other thing though that it has that is large is the price. This is well over $400. I think it's like $450, uh, especially with the Crossfire. The amount for Crossfire really is quite nice. Um, but that's makes it a little bit pricier than a lot of these other options. A lot of the other ones are closer to the $300 range. Of course, if you're gonna build your own, you're looking at spending 350 to 400 anyway. So you essentially spend 50 to 60 bucks for this formula, but you get a lot more for your money. You get the larger motors. You get the more versatile part combo. You get the ultra protective thing. Now, because these are guards and not ducks, you don't have the washout problems that you would have on a traditional tall ducted Cinewoop. So you can almost do like a freestyle quad with this. You could do a power loop. You could do a lot of moves that you can't do on a traditional Cinewoop. Is it gonna feel heavy? Yes, it's still gonna feel a little overweight. So like I would not 
mistakenly say that this is a free stock quad, but you could in a pinch do some quick dives. If you were following somebody, you could do a split S, no problem if you wanted to be able to follow somebody in a really cool manner. So iFly is really redefining the Cinewoop category. They've went with different options from the traditional your small one, your large one, and between the two, that covers both ranges. You know, there's a lot of photography professionals that really subscribe to that idea. I want an ultra wide lens, and then I want a zoom that is gonna go cover me from medium to long range. And by having those two pieces of glass in my kit first, that really covers all your bases. And you could essentially do the same thing by getting these two iFlight pieces of kit. So really good job. I like that you're innovating. I like that in the Cinewoop category, they're not just putting out new versions of the same old formula. They're trying to innovate smaller, larger, tougher, without the sacrifice of a duct. This guard really gives you a lot of confidence because it can bump against something but it doesn't sacrifice that flight feel. What do you think in the comments, guys? What are you cine whooping? Stay tuned because I'm gonna have a cine whoop shootout comparing all of these along with the square two, the cine spore that we just saw, and, and this sucker right here, the open source race whoop project that I printed some nylon ducks for. Stay tuned, thanks guys.